So Emma Cowley began her career in 2004 in investment banking uh, before joining Bruin Dolphin in 2014. Emma has been heavily involved with Bruin Dolphin's initiative delivering financial well-being support to schools and businesses across the UK. She is a mother to a three-year-old and is so currently dealing with school finding questions herself for the first time. Sarah Kirby is a Chartered Fellow of the Chartered Institute for Securities and Investment. She's got over 20 years of experience in the industry. She's a voting member of Bruin Dolphin's Asset Allocation Committee, but also a mother of three children all at independent schools in South East London. This is her first parents forum with us. And David Quintrell uh, will be familiar to many of you as a regular panelist on our online parent finance forums. David joined Bruin in, in 1998. His expertise covers a wide range of financial planning areas, including tax efficient investments, pensions and retirement planning. Uh, he has two girls, aged 12 and eight, one in the independent school and one in the state system. So we really have got a fantastic panel of experts to talk to you about your school fee planning questions. So what we're going to do is I'm going to start by asking the panel a couple of questions and then when we get into a topic, we'll take questions from the floor, okay? So we get, we'll, 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 we'll mix, up, mix it up and do some questions from, from me and then some questions from the floor. So we're going to start, I'm going to ask David, how did Bruin Dolphin suggest parents plan for school fees? Thanks, Ryan. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. Um, it's quite nice for me, having been online, done all the online webinars, to actually see human faces and not a little light. Uh, so bear with me if I look slightly startled when I can see people's reactions to what we're, what we're talking about. Um, ultimately, ultimately um, it's really a, a question of putting school fee planning into the context of your wider financial planning. Uh, and that's both in terms of the short term, medium term and long term objectives and looking at things like maintaining the real value of, of your assets, looking at the cost of school fees, making sure that school fee inflation is covered, real life inflation is covered and those sorts of things. So we do that a lot through cash flow planning. So that's looking at your income, assets, outgoings and liabilities now, forecasting those through your financial lives and those of your children through full time education. And um, one of the things that you were going to talk about was a, a, the holistic view of planning? Yes, so um, certainly uh, when we talk about the holistic view of planning, uh, obviously school fee planning can be a very, very important and prescient part of that planning to start with. Uh, but the reality is looking at it in the context of other things like retirement planning or particular capital expenditure you've got if you're looking to upsize at a point or downsize and put that into the context. So cash flow planning and, and financial planning ultimately enables us to put all of those objectives into place and into the context of, of your affairs and, and moving forward. And one of the things that uh, I found most interesting that David told me in the online forums is the percentage of Bruin families where the grandparents are helping families pay school fees. Do you want to talk a bit about that? Yeah, so it, it's not uncommon, um, ultimately, again, when we're talking about financial planning, often we're, we're also referring to, to family planning, for want of a, a slightly less teenage phrase. Um, and that's looking at grandparents helping out with the school fees or aunts, uncles or, or whatever, particularly for grandparents, that's often a very useful way of looking at inheritance tax planning um, and making gifts, either lump sum or regular gifts from income, which we'll come on to later as well in terms of, of the tax efficiency of those, and being able to really look at the financial planning and school fee planning in the context of, of family finances too. Okay, to, so to summarise what, what David's saying in terms of what we're going to be talking about today is um, the importance of getting a plan together, that, that you need to take a holistic view of all the issues, not just school fees, and that, and that you might well be able to get support from other members of your family as well. So um, we're going to start by, by di delving into one particular aspect of, of school fee planning, which is affordability. And this is a really key issue because school fees keep going up and school fees in London particularly but also boarding schools here are very very expensive so so we're going to begin by talking about affordability so Emma um, do you want to start by talking about um, about the kind of issues that are there in affordability? Sure. Um, so we actually met a couple who are dealing with this right now. We met them through a webinar that David and I did for you earlier in the year. So when we met this couple, um, they were considering what do they do in terms of school fees? Was, was it affordable? They've got three kids, 
two of them just started at school and one of them was at nursery. Um, and they really wanted to look at the affordability question. Was it going to be um, was it going to be possible for them to send their three kids to, to private school? Um, now both of them were really really successful. Both had their own businesses, were earning well, but maybe weren't earning enough to cover school fees for three plus things like food and utilities and maybe the occasional holiday. Um, so we sat down with them to work through their current situation and, and work through some, some possibilities and some of these options that might be available to them. Now, they, they were living in London, based in London, and, and they were considering moving out. Um, as you probably all know, school fees in London uh, can be considerably higher than outside of London. So they were considering that question. Do they need to be in London? Could they, could they move? Could they move further away uh, to, school, to look at schools that might have been slightly more affordable? So they did that. They spent some time looking outside of London and decided, yep, they didn't need to be in London. They could consider being outside. Um, they found a school in Dorset that they really liked, but most importantly, that the kids really liked as well. Uh, so then it was, okay, we've made this decision, how do, how do we make it happen? Um, they did consider maybe looking at boarding schools. Um, this particular school that they found was a day school and that worked for them, but they did consider the option of them staying in London and looking at boarding schools outside of London, but that wasn't for them. Um, now, we started looking through their, their balance sheet, if you like, their assets, what they had, to see what we could do, how we could create a plan that was going to work for them to achieve being able to send their three kids to this school. Now, they had three properties all in and around London. They were living in one of them, and they were renting out the other two. Um, they decided they were obviously going to move, um, so they actually put all three properties on the market to try and make this happen. Um, now, we all know that property uh, doesn't always work the way we want it to. You can't sell a house overnight. Um, but they were able to sell two of those properties. So they sold their main residence, and they sold one of the rental properties. With the cash that they got from those sales, they were able to pay off outstanding mortgages. They found a house near where they wanted to be in Dorset that they were able to buy with a, a manageable size mortgage, and they l were left with a lump sum that was going to be earmarked uh, to pay for school fees. Now, they spoke to the school, and I would encourage everyone to do this. They spoke to the school about what their options were in, in, in the, in the um, possibility of paying up front. Would they get a discount if they paid um, in bulk up front? Um, for them, it didn't, it didn't, the numbers didn't make sense for them. They were more comfortable to take that lump sum and to invest it um, to hopefully get some income and growth to, to uh, enable them to pay for school fees. But I would encourage everyone to ask that question of the schools because it might be right for you. Um, so they did explore that. Um, they have still got the third property on the market. Uh, that's, that, ha that sale hasn't gone through yet. They are renting it, so that is providing some cash flow to help them towards paying for school fees. But at every step of the way with, with, with this couple and this family, we've looked at all the numbers side of it. We've done a lot of spreadsheet work to make and look at a lot of different permutations of what the future might look like to make sure that this goal is achievable for them. So like I said, they've, they've sold those two properties. We've set up an investment portfolio with that money, the lump sum that um, was earmarked to pay for school fees. We are investing for them using their allowances, such as their ISA allowance and their capital gains tax allowance and their dividend allowance, for example, uh, just trying to make sure that their investments are as tax efficient and, and suitable for them as they possibly can be. And then we're using that to help them pay for the school fees as, as they come up. And that's quite easy for us because we know roughly what is going to be due and when. I say roughly, school fee inflation is a real thing, so we don't know exactly what the, the costs are going to be, but we know roughly where they, what they are and when they're going to when they're going to come come due. So, sorry, go on. <laughs> I'm just going to say, I mean, this kind of like completely turning your life upside down, of like coming to a school show, finding a school in Dorset, selling a house in London, moving a house, getting an investment going, paying the school fees, is the kind of thing that people can use the show for. I mean, it, it is extraordinary what you, how, how much change you can, you can make happen if, you want to, if that becomes your main way of sorting out affordability. Um, I guess, staying on that topic, um, I mean, w you started talking about prepaying. Um, I don't know how much people know about prepaying. Uh, no, okay, people are shaking their head. They don't know about prepaying. Um, should, we, should we talk a little bit more about that? Sure. So, if you're in a position where you've got a lump sum that, you could, that you're earmarking for school, pe school fees, you can speak to the school and say, if I paid for everything up front now, what would that be? Um, and they, they might cut you a deal. <laughs> they, they, they'll come back with something. And, and 
It really depends on you as an individual. So if you pay up front, you know that it's then done. It gives you some certainty. It gives you some sort of visibility of what the future looks like in a, in a little bit more of a concrete way. Um, but it's not necessarily right for everyone. I would just encourage that everyone do do that. Um, and it is dependent on the school in terms of what, what they will offer you. Sarah, do you want to add something on that topic? Thank you, yes. Um, so really, I mean, what we would stress in all these situations is that everybody's situation is different, um, and that's where we can help you really sort of lay out um, all, all your potential options and explore those and stress test them, um, given what your priorities are. Um, but it is also, you know, it's not just about working with us, of course, most importantly, it's about working with the schools themselves, you know, what sort of options are available in terms of bursaries, in terms of scholarships, in terms of facilitating um, your child um, through the education that, that, that they would really um, want to target. Um, and it is different in different cases. And for some people, you know, having that certainty, knowing that, that some of the um, burden of, of, that, of that constant um, financial uh, pressure is gone is very important but then for others it's a combination of that you know one's very aware in this environment that you know keeping funds in cash or in near cash you know you're not protecting the value of that against inflation um, inflation is perhaps higher than it has been for a very long time so it might make more sense to put some or all of that money into something that will grow over and above inflation over the long term or a combination of those those factors <laughs>